All right, well, we are getting ready to start our trip to Fairbanks. Blowing 20 knots of a little bit of dust. I should be all right. Got my life jacket on. What could go wrong? Boat's getting a little closer. Thought we're getting out of here in the, in the big chunk now. easier when the boat's staying still and not rocking back and forth. Get the instruments on. All right, we got the we got the kayak on. We got on board. Now what we got to do is get the uh, get us off the mooring. When it's blowing like this, it's pretty hard because the boat's kind of heavy, and you got to pull the boat towards the mooring. I might have to use the motors for it, but it's easier with two people and my wife's on shore. So we'll see how this works out. side of the spit here. Winds blowing from the southeast, we're going to go on the north side, the northwest side, and then uh, it won't be as windy over there. Well, we timed it just right because uh, it took, we had to bring the tractor back, so it took us about a, maybe a little over an hour. So we, we dumped the stuff up at a real high you know, way up above the tide, and now that we're, unless she moved it down, she moved it down, so never mind, she's just a smart lady. Get this stuff loaded up.
You can do it, dude. Hey, now what? Yeah. the smoothest start to a uh, mini vacation um, but we're all alive we got all of our gear in the boat I think we're gonna be all right goodbye island we'll be back in about four days stuff off of the boat up there and loaded into the pickup truck now we just got to go find us a parking spot for the boat so that's what we're going to go do now all right we found our parking spot nice little spot closest one to the fueling station we've got the old fairweather express number one a little bit bigger than our boat that's all right though you ready to fly i'm ready to fly <laughs> Well, all right, we have landed in Fairbanks. As you can see, a little colder here than it is in Southeast Alaska. They said this morning it was 11 degrees. I don't know what it is now, but it's brisk. So I dropped my wife off at, my, uh, at our niece's house and she's gonna visit with them while I go and chat with the uh, solar guys. So I thought uh, I'd bring you along with us. So. Uh, this morning we got about six inches of snow here and then it warmed up it started raining and uh, and then tonight it's supposed to um, freeze over again so that could make some miserable um, road conditions so we're trying to get all this knocked out real quick before the temperature drops and it starts uh, freezing the road All right, so I'm here at uh, Renewable Energy Systems, Systems of, of Alaska, of Alaska. Yeah. and uh, we're going to get a little run through about what we're getting here, and this is Eddie, and he's going to be our guide today. He's pretty much the guru that runs the, keeps the operation running. 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Everybody just calls me Solar Eddie. Been doing it for about 30 years. I grew up off grid and I'm very fortunate to, to be part of a, uh, an industry now that is a lot more mainstream than when I started. You know, when I started, it was just go out in the middle of nowhere, we'll drop you off. Hopefully you can build or connect what we need you to connect and then we'll bring you back. Um, and then, you know, just as slowly as uh, renewable energy's really taken off, we do a lot of repeater sites, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Coast Guard sites down where you live, down in Juneau. Keep the, uh, you know, keep the Mayday channels open with wind and solar and generators and battery backups. So, uh, you know, very similar to your system, which is actually, you know, by itself, pretty cool. Having lithium batteries, you know, being in Juneau, you don't have a ton of sun, but, you know, what sun you do have just means that instead of one panel, you need three panels to kind of keep up with it. Uh, you've got a generator already. You've got an inverter with a charger built into it. In fact, you've got phenomenal batteries. You've got lithium batteries already. So for us, it's, it's easy to just kind of design off of your lifestyle. We know what you're running, so we know how much power you need on a daily basis. So then we can size the inverter, we can size the charger, we can size the solar panels and the wind turbine that you already have. So that's kind of the mentality that we take an approach to. And then, um, you know, we do complete kits and programming so that when you pick it up, we can do some training with you. It's all wired. It's not, here's 27 cardboard boxes, have fun, <laughs> right? And then we support you long-term with, you know, questions. We tend to develop long-term relationships with customers as they grow and build, or maybe they, they buy another cabin or they buy another home or they buy an RV or a boat or, you know, we get to, we get to play with all those types of uh, installations. And then we do installations all over the world, mainly all over Alaska, but we'll, hey, in the wintertime, we'd love to go to Alaska, go to Hawaii because it's nice and warm. Yeah, you know? yeah of course. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if we get an opportunity to come down to your place in Juneau, we'll do it. Um, but we have a whole installation team. We have a team of certified electricians um, and they've all been doing this for a very long time. So we're really proud of what we have to do. And uh, uh, we're also proud to be working with you. So where would you like to start? Well, let's just kind of run through what, what we're getting. Sure. The two of us, me and my wife, and then uh, we'll, we can cruise through and kind of see what else you have to offer here. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. So we can start with the solar panels? Yeah, yeah. Be let's start with you? the solar. Yeah, yeah. So um, solar panels have come a long way. When I first started, they were about two foot by four foot. They weighed about 20 pounds. You know, this is a four foot by almost eight foot solar panel. Um, and it weighs about 70 pounds. Uh, the output back in the day was about 75 watts. That was your average. And for 75 watts, you were gonna buy a solar panel for probably about 700 bucks. This panel is a 480 watt panel and it's only you know right around 500 bucks. So uh, more than four times the output and, and still a lower cost. Uh, we've also added bifaciality. So they make power from the front and the back. There's no white backing cover on the back. You can actually see somewhat through the solar panel. It's translucent. So so we can get an extra 20% from the back side of a solar panel, uh, especially up here where we have snow on the ground. We have that albedo, the sunshine bouncing off the snow. We can make 20% of our power from the back, even if the front was completely covered with snow or, you know, shading. Um, and then you add the fact that we order another thing that we order for Alaska is split cell panels. This is like two solar panels stacked on top of each other, is that you can completely cover the bottom half of the solar panel and still be making at least 50% of your power. So if, let's say this is close to the ground and this side gets covered up with some snow, the bottom half, yep. the top half is still be collected Making a ton Make, of energy. Making energy, yeah. yeah. what used to be is if you had one solar panel and you put a couple of inches of snow across the bottom, that could impact almost 90% of your performance. Yeah. Uh, now you have like a shadow going across it. And mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, and so they're incredibly efficient. So a 480 watt panel peaks out at just under 600 watts, which just is crazy. You know, I mean, it's just in a, a lot yeah. of power. So you'll have uh, six to eight of these solar panels. And because, again, you're in Juneau, in Fairbanks, I would only have three of them. But, yeah. uh, you know, maritime weather, uh, you know, you're not going to see 50 below while well, we see 50 below. So there's some trade-offs for sure. For yeah. Sure. Yep. Yep. So and the so solar just panels, the last little part about these guys, incredibly robust. Right? Solid. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We can put these on mountaintops. We can put them in your yard. We can, you know. Kind of like a Timex, takes a lick and keeps on. That's right. That's right. Designed for a uh, one-inch ball of ice doing 80 miles an hour and it still won't break. Is that right? Yep. So this is like could withstand a hell storm if you had i mean we don't have hell but no down in america they do and they, they they quite regularly destroy panels but you can order the right panel for the right environment you okay. know a lot of things that work down in america don't work up here in alaska and so yeah. what we've designed for you is something that we know is going to work where you're at um and going to give you decades of, of great performance okay and then just for comparison the panels that we're replacing these with are 180 watt panels so basically we're going from 180 to four 
what is it, 485, 450? Yeah, peaking out at 550. At 550. Yeah. So big difference for us. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take up a little bit more room for you, but you're going to have three times the solar output in, in almost the same amount of space. Yeah. A little bit, uh, a little bit wider. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just a, a great improvement for you guys. And you can sell your old solar panels and your old solar controller to somebody yeah, else. Yeah, hand me down. That's how we got them. Was we bought That's them right. from our neighbors. Right. So. And if and if you're paying taxes like the rest of everybody else, you're going to get 30% tax credit on everything that you're you're buying, everything that you're putting together, freight, shipping, you know, labor, as long as it's not your labor, yeah. and all the equipment. So when you do your taxes, you know, you might float the money for a little bit, but when you do your taxes, you can apply. It's a dollar for dollar tax credit. It's not a deduction. So you'll get a check back for 30% of your system. That's assistance. awesome. Yeah, you spend 10 grand, you get three grand back. That's great. Now you can buy more panels or more batteries. There, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the solar system for, for what we're going to set you up with. And, um, you know, I talk about where we, we pre-wire, pre-program, uh, put all of our kits together because we get to do this every day. We don't want you to have to be, a, a, you know, a, a, you know, basically an electrical engineer or, you know, you specialize in what you specialize in. We're going to specialize in what we specialize in. And we're going we're gonna to put all of these pieces of equipment together so you've got a nice, simple, very um, well put together system. We're experts on the programming. So, you know, most of the problems that we have or customers have are just not understanding the programming. And out of the box, you know, any piece of equipment that you buy is probably about 70% efficient. It doesn't know what type of battery you're going to be putting uh, it to. It doesn't know what type of solar panel you're going to be. It doesn't know what size generator you're going to have. So if you can... Uh, understand the settings and program them to the, the particular application such as yours, we can save you fuel, we can get a lot more out of our, our, our solar array, and we can get a much longer battery life. So we, we, we prevent, you know, 90% of that learning curve. And by having what we call a plug and play kit, you know, in this case, you're, you're getting a, a 4,000 watt, 48 volt, 240 volt output uh, package with a solar controller, with a remote monitor, with a system control panel and a solar controller, you know, literally you can take this this piece of equipment that we've already put on a backer board for you, hang it on the wall, put your four screws in, hook up your batteries, plug it in, turn on the blender, start making margaritas. Right. So instantly you're already up and running. No, no banging your head, no understanding wire sizes or breakers or you know programming settings. That's all done. So you can focus on what you do, like I like to say. You know, it just makes it very simple. What's the weight size of this? The weight size? Yeah, like with every, with everything that's going on, what we're buying, do you know roughly about how much? This isn't going to be something I'm lifting up with one hand and putting the screws in with the other. Yeah. It's going to be... Yeah, so it's about 95 pounds as is. As is? Yep, yep. And generally when we're installing it, we're like, hey, you're going to need a helper for a minute. Yeah. And generally what I'll do is I'll, I'll bolt a little 2x4 on the wall, make it level, and then I can just put my backer board against there, hold it up with one hand, it stays level, put my screws in, and we're good to go. So 95-pound package. Uh, you know, the solar panels are 70 pounds each. So one guy can kind of put that in pretty easy. Uh, batteries, you have lithium batteries, so they're very light. Yeah. You know, otherwise, uh, lead acid batteries generally have two handles for two people because they're really heavy, you know. So uh, you've got a good, you know, um, you know, you've got a, a good start already on the batteries. And, um, you know, I know you probably find somebody to help you put it into place. Oh, yeah, my wife's done. here. There she you go. There you go. Out. Yep, yep, yep. Perfect. So, Perfect. so this is our inverter. This is going to be... So this is the DC? Yeah, yeah. So all DC, the solar panels and the wind turbine is going to go into this? Yeah, so basically you have a, an enclosure right here that, that, that handles all of your DC inputs. Uh, plus it's, there's a safety disconnect for the inverter. All, um, you know, all breakers are designed for the wire size uh, so that the wire doesn't overheat or catch fire. So everything that you install, whether it's a wind, solar, hydro, you know, those all should have breakers as they're coming in. And this is a very nice, clean way to hide all of your wiring, protect it, you know, with, with uh, uh, the appropriate size breaker, um, and tie it all into, you know, just one set of cables going to your batteries. I think we've all seen that the squirrel's nest, the rat's nest of wiring, where it's just a ton of different things. You've got a battery cable with like 42 wires on it. You've got wires all over the place, and you're just, it really makes it... Um, 
you know, as long as there's breakers on it, it's it's safe, but it makes it hard to understand, it makes it hard to really decipher if you're if you're really trying to, you know, put together a nice system. It sure is nice to be able to have a nice clean way to combine all of your uh, loads. And that's what this is called, the DC combiner. So we're combining our solar, our inverter, uh, batteries, our wind, our hydro. We're combining them all into one nice clean box. We've got a system control panel mounted here. And then we have the AC panel, right? An AC breaker box. We're all familiar with that, but this is a nice clean way to combine your generator input, um, your output loads, um, a bypass. We also include a bypass for this. So, so if you're, you know, basically this has an internal relay. So when your generator shuts down and you're watching a movie, this automatically takes over and your movie doesn't even go out. Well, the generator power is passing through the relay that's built into the, the inverter, passing through to power your, your movie when the generator's running. And then the generator runs out of fuel, this automatically takes over. Well, if this was down for maintenance, effectively you would have to pull all the wires out, wire nut them, and then you would have power to pass through it. Well, that generally happens at 2 a.m. and we don't wanna you know, start trying to do wire nuts and everything. So we have a bypass assembly. So if the system's down for maintenance, you can put it in bypass, start the generator, and power goes right to the house, right to your loads. So that's, you're not, you know, that's exactly what we need. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I believe when you first bought your inverter, you just bought the inverter itself. Yeah. So, so we didn't have a DC combiner box, and we didn't have an AC combiner box. So these add definitely a tremendous amount of, of um, you know, professionalism to the kit, plus a lot of peace of mind and, and some, some, you know, some quick adjustments so you're not trying to, you know, figure things out when you really need power. And if, if your batteries are out for maintenance or if, you know, um, you have to replace this for some reason, then it's a very quick and easy process. Just bypass it, start your generator, and you're back to normal. And then so you can also have a remote start with this system if your generator allows it. Yeah. You can so you just press a button or you can have a program when once it goes down to a certain uh, battery voltage, then the generator just pops on automatically and then it's it's kind of like a hands-off system. It is, yeah. yeah. We, we can take this as far as you'd like, as far as automation goes. These these kits are made by Schneider. Uh, you know, all the solar panels, the, the battery fuel gauge, the system control panel, the solar controller. But we also carry uh, kits by generator line that will automate the generator. As long as it's got an electric start, you know, internally we can pretty much automate everything. But there are some cool kits out there that not only automate the starting and stopping, they just pretend to be the key. And so by pretending to be the key, we can start a generator, we can, you know, start, you know, pretend like we're using glow plugs, we can use a choke uh, temporarily, and we can have it start on voltage, like you said, we can have it start on temperature, we can have it start on time, we can have it start on capacity. You'll have a fuel gauge, I call it a fuel gauge, it's actually just a capacity meter, because that tells you if you're 100%, 90%, 80%, and it really makes it, when you do run your generator, much more efficient, because we're not just going off of voltage. So you're right, we can auto start pretty much any, any generator that has an electric start on it, we can auto start. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a, a nice way to automate things. And a lot of our mountaintop repeater sites are completely automated. And then we add the remote monitoring. So when you're all set up, I'll be able to look at your system from Fairbanks, Alaska down to Juneau, Alaska, and I'll be able to help you if you, you have a problem, you have a setting issue, you have something that we want to make adjustments. I can log in, I can look at that, we can talk about it very quickly. It's like, you know, save it, save it me. From flying down just for yeah, a, a yeah. trip breaker or a simple setting. You know, yeah. So we've got a lot of sites that are that way, which are great. And lodges too. We do a lot of lodges. Wow. So good point there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun stuff. I mean, it's and sky's the limit. You know, really, you're getting a top of the line system by Schneider, um, and you're getting top of the line Canadian solar panels. You know, you've already got top of the line lithium batteries. Um, so now, when you get back home, you're able to install this. You can go do what you you like to do and not beat your head against the wall with, ah, oh, darn it, it won't won't do what I want it to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Mama will be happy. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's the most yep. important thing. You also offer. A Wind, so can we talk a little bit about wind? Yeah, yeah, so my, you know, as far as wind goes, I always say, you know, you're, you're kind of in that 1% club. Everybody thinks they have wind, but really, until you actually measure the wind at your site, or you know that my tarps are always moving, and it's really annoying, and I only have limbs on my trees on one side, then we know that we've got, hey, we've got a good site for, for wind. Um, so until then, it, it's, you know, a lot of times it turns out to just be yard art or maintenance. We've got a tower, we've got moving parts, we've got blades, we've got noise, you know, we've got all these things that for the right person and, and you've got great wind, you know, those one percenters, you know, my, my general rule of thumb is go solar, do a little bit more solar, do a little bit more solar, 
and then we'll talk about wind. Yeah. So you've already done that. You know that wind does work where you're at. So we sell wind turbines. We sell, um, you know, wind turbines that are from 200 watts all the way up to 50,000 watts. We do towers that are 20 feet all the way up to 300 feet. Um, and we do residential towers, uh, residential turbines, and we'll do commercial turbines as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, it's very site specific as far as your wind goes. So, yeah. so it's advisable to, to really look at wind. You want a 12 mile an hour average, and almost all wind turbines peak out about 25 miles per hour. Some shut down at 25 miles per hour, which is not the turbine you want. Some are not designed for cold weather, which is not the turbine you want. Out of 50 wind turbines that I've worked with over the decades, there's probably only three that I would really uh, say would be a good wind turbine. You've got Kestrel, you've got Proven, you've got APRS of four, and you've got Primus. So those are the four manufacturers that really have good turbines. You can find a lot of turbines out there for 50 bucks online, yeah. but they're really not gonna last. They're not gonna make much energy for you. Most of the time, they do what I call a grenade, right? They shed their blades, they disappear, you wake up in the morning, there's no more wind turbine <laughs> at the top of your tower. So, uh, we, you know, solar is just so elegant. There's no moving parts. It's very simple. You know, it's just, you know, day after day, we know the sun's gonna shine tomorrow, but uh, and, we're not sure the wind's And it's blow. so much more reliable then. I mean, it's yes. got a bigger, punch than what wind does yeah wind is so sporadic so yeah. intermittent now again there are some sites where we know there's just crazy insane winds you know antarctica mountaintops in alaska you know 50 below and high winds you know that'll, that'll take a toll on certain turbines so um you know there are there are applications where like you have we call it a hybrid system we've got solar you know for six or seven months out of the year and as the sun goes away generally it gets windier so you're gonna have a hybrid system where we transition from solar to wind and then when we have periods of no wind or no solar we have a generator to, to get our auxiliary input and we want to minimize that for the most part so you've got a very small amount of fuel that you use annually to recharge your batteries the rest of the time you'll be on the wind and solar that you've got okay and maybe someday hydro i mean you're out on the water so tidal we've got some of the big, biggest tidal changes in the well, world that's right? true 30, 30 yeah. feet so yeah. you know they're, they're working on some of that our turbines or hydro turbines are designed for high head right elevation loss or uh, high velocity meaning we've got a stream that's moving pretty quick put it in a river yep. or a stream yeah yep we carry about three or four different types of hydro turbines as well yeah and that's then we'll pretty do cool. Geothermal. Geothermal is kind of cool, but again, uh, there's pumps and fluids and maintenance. You know? Yeah. But uh, we're very fortunate. We get to do a lot. So it's pretty work. easy. Yes. I mean, once you get it all hooked up and it's running good, it's kind of like, unless you're running lead acid batteries, and then there's maintenance to the batteries. Oh, very much so. Very much so. But I, th I think with lead acid, I, I think they're still the most cost-effective solution. I think they're still the most efficient, really, uh, especially for, for beginners where, you know, you, you might not know what you're doing. You might destroy your batteries. So, uh, you know, another part of what we do is we, we eliminate 90% of that learning curve. Um, you know, lead acid is, is going to give you a pretty long life um, and a really good price point. Uh, and with a little bit of maintenance, yeah, you're right. They're not hands-free. Um, you can get seven to 10 years out of a battery bank pretty easily. Uh, so those are wet cell batteries. You check the fluids once in a while, you clean them, you, you uh, pay attention to them a little bit. And then you have sealed lead acid batteries, which are no maintenance, there's no fluids. Uh, generally more expensive up front. They don't quite last as long because they're harder to, to manage the, the discharges. All batteries only have a certain amount of charge and discharges in their life. So you want to manage that, whether it's lead acid or lithium or gel, you know, the, all those technologies. Um, but lithium is the cream of the crop. The price is coming down, um, and like your battery bank is a lithium battery bank, you will get far superior cycles. You can discharge as deep as you want, and you'll probably get 15 to 20 years out of them, would yeah. be my guess. Uh, and nowadays, you know, I never thought this would happen, but, you know, my batteries have digital on, off and on and off switches. They have Bluetooth built into them, so they tell me what their state of charge is. They have digital displays on them. I mean, they're just yeah, really coming along. Really nice. Yeah, they're slick. The they're ones slick. I got aren't that nice. But. No, but you're <laughs> let, they're lithium, and they're very light, so it's much easier to move them around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of batteries, can we cruise by and see what kind of batteries you guys offer here? Yeah, for sure, for sure. A uh, couple of them right here, right? So these, you know, we've got more lithium batteries on display than we and then we have lead acids um, so you know we've got 24 volt batteries here this is that that kind of that on off switch that i'm talking about these are made by rolls serret um, they've got a little digital display on them they've got an on off switch um, they're lithium so they charge 40 percent faster than a lead acid battery there's no fluids there's no corrosion there's no maintenance the only drawback to most lithium batteries is that a lead acid battery fully charges good to 90 below 
right? So we see 40, 50, 60 below quite a bit up here. Lead acid does not really like anything below four to below, you know, they're getting better. And there are some batteries that have heaters built into them. We carry some of those lithium batteries that have heaters built into them. Um, but, you know, depending on your application, we're gonna look at what's the best fit for you, you know, chemistry wise. Cause again, what works in America, doesn't always work up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at your vision, your, you know, your lifestyle, your, your building envelope, um, and your budget. And we're going to come up with a, with a game plan that fits your needs today and in the future as you grow. Cool thing about all these systems is they're almost all modular. We can add more solar panels. We can add more batteries. We can add more capacity. Yeah. We can, you know, we can, we can continue to grow that system. A couple things you don't want to, um, you don't want to outgrow and that's your inverter, right? We, we, some inverters we can stack and make, you know, double, triple or quadruple the output. Some inverters you're limited to what you're, what you're in, in the one footprint. It's like a generator, you know? So now that you talked about that, you basically have 12, 24 and 48. What is there like a specific, is it just per what the individual wants or is there something that you recommend? Yeah. So it's a great question because, um, you know, um, Anytime you can raise your voltage, you lower your amperage, which gives you, um, you know, smaller wire sizes. Uh, and when we're, we're working with DC systems, sometimes our wire costs 20 bucks a foot. And if you want more power out of it, uh, instead of going to a larger wire, you know, we're already playing with wires normally the size of our thumb. If you continue to go with more power at a lower voltage, like 12 volts, you would end up with wire the size of your wrist to be 80 bucks a foot. So what we can do, instead of going, um, just larger cable, if we double our voltage, right, our operating voltage, which is our battery voltage, 12, 24, 48, we double that or quadruple that, we can keep the same size wire, now we can get four times as much power out of it. Mm -hmm. So in your case, you've gone the ultimate, 48 volts. So as a good example of, we were talking about that this morning, this solar controller is a 60 amp solar controller. 60 amps at 12 volts is about 700 watts. 60 amps at 24 volts is about 1500 watts. But 60 amps at 48 volts is almost 3000 watts. So if you had a 12 volt system and the amount of solar that we were putting on your system at 12 volts, we'd have to have four of these solar controllers. Yeah. But by going to 48 volts, we get um, one solar controller to do the same amount of output as, 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 as it would be, you know, with four of those controllers at 12 volts, so 48 volts. And the, the general rule of thumb is 12 volts up to about 2000 watts continuous. 24 volts for about up to 4,000 watts continuous and anything above about 4,000 watts continuous all the way up to about 15 kilowatts is generally going to be about 48 volts. Those are kind of the, the rules of thumb there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we listened to our neighbors. Yeah, right? He had Your neighbors 20, hooked you up. He had a 24 volt system and he was like, you just go 48. Trust me, you're, you'll be better off. Great advice to start out your journey. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, great way to go. Because I absolutely knew nothing. <laughs> I was just like, okay. <laughs> So, so, you know, these are our lead acids. Some of them, again, have blue, built-in Bluetooth. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we get over to our, our lead acid offerings. Um, everybody's probably heard of golf cart batteries. That is probably the most common one for small cabins, golf carts, RVs. There's a, a six volt golf cart battery. You know, pretty common for very small systems. Um, so, so, you know, one of the most common. The next most common is, is gonna be the L16. Everybody, you can look up an L16. It's a six volt battery, contains a ton of power. These are lead acid, these are wet cell batteries, so you have fluids in them. Um, we have uh, caps that will tell you, you know, the, the liquid level indicators. We have hydro caps. Um, and generally what you'll do is you'll just hook a couple of six volt batteries in series. You know, if you hook two six volt batteries in series, you can make a giant 12 volt battery instead of two six volt batteries. So those are pretty common. The six volt batteries are probably the most common. Um, and then they make the, the same footprint in a two volt, two volt battery. Now the two volt, instead of, uh, you know, two six volts to make a 12 volt battery, you'd need six of these, but the capacity of the battery is about 10 times as much. So by having six of these two volt batteries, you get much more than you would have with, uh, with uh, two six volt batteries or even six six volt batteries. Yeah. So once we get into the larger size homes, we get into lodges. We do a lot of lodges. Uh, and then we get into, uh, you know, bigger two volt batteries. These are more, more often referred to as locomotive batteries. Uh, is it, we, these are actually what they use out on locomotives. So, you know, one of these, man, these are displays, so there's nothing in them, but you know, generally one of these weighs about 350 pounds. And for a 48 volt battery, you need 24 of these. Whew. But if you put that in your car, you could probably drive 
all the way down to Seattle just on your starter, right? Just because there's oh, is that, right? that much battery capacity. Wow, in there. that's crazy. So, so you know, the bigger two volt batteries are or more lodge style, um, very very power hungry locom locomotive, or uh, you know, we do some military sites that have these as well. Um, and then we get into the same footprint, but a sealed battery, right? So a sealed battery is just you know, uh, you, there's no fluids in it, so you can tip it over on its side. Nothing's going to spill out. Um, same footprint. They make them kind of manageable. They're, they're about 135 pounds each, so two handles for two people to carry them around. Uh, and then, you know, so, so uh, you know, sealed batteries are pretty slick. We generally use those for battery backups uh, right inside of people's homes. Uh, or we use them for mountaintop sites. If we're going we're gonna to fly them up to the mountaintop. We don't want to show up more than once a year. We're going to go with a maintenance-free battery and some other. We'll, we'll take some special considerations yeah. to make sure that we're, we're, we're charging and discharging appropriately so we still get a 10-year service life out of them. Uh, and then we move into some other lithium flavors here. These are more, uh, these have wall mounts on them. And then actually we have lithium batteries that mount in racks. They got a pretty slick, you know, dead front on the rack. Looks like a, a you know, a cabinet. And, uh, you know, we can just put these rack mount batteries in. Totally modular. You just slide it in, you hook it up, and it's, you just add capacity as you go. And then various other footprints. We do a lot of RVs in the summer. A lot of people that don't necessarily stay here in the summer or in the winter. So lithium's a good fit if you're not going to try to use it at 30 below, right? Yeah. Uh, so more just kind of uh, form, you know, different footprints that fit different battery trays for certain applications. Um, and that's uh, and that's pretty much most of our lithiums, whether it's Battleborn or Rolls Red or Go Power or Discovery AES or um, you know um, uh, PVX Sun Extenders, um, pretty pretty good quality batteries that I've just named off. Yeah. Well, all right, Eddie. Thank you very much for uh, showing me around and helping me build the, the system that's going to work best for me. I really appreciate we're it. We're excited for you. We're excited both for the quality of life, you know, some of the improvements that you made, and we're excited for the journey coming forward, you know. Yeah, thank you, Brian. I can't wait appreciate to get it installed. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, ditto. Right. And uh, we're going to want to see pictures. Yeah, sure. well, of course. Yeah, right on, right on. <laughs>